Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here, and today I've got a piece of advice for you. Today is coming from a user submitted question here, so let's go ahead and take a look at that question here. And I'll go ahead and show you what my response is. You can pause the video and read here, but I've taken some notes down here for you, so let's go ahead and begin. So the question that came in was in regards to how do I take notes as a programmer? And these are just some general things that I think are very useful and have worked for me, so I just wanted to go ahead and share those with you, whether you're a student, practitioner, or maybe even just working in some other field and just want some advice on note taking. So my first piece of advice here is just to give yourself a system that has as little friction as possible. So what do I mean by that is that you don't have to fire up some really large program. You just want something that's available where you can get your thoughts down so you can clear your mind and just be able to take note of it. You can go back later and edit it to make those documents look a lot nicer if you want. But the point is to just be able to capture the thought of what was important or what question you had in a single place. And yes, I do mean in a single place here. That's how I keep my notes. I think it's actually relatively useful. So for example, let me go ahead and show you here. I keep a coding journal here. So something that I do here and over time is I add different tags on different things that were interesting. Maybe there are quotes, maybe there are things about C++. And then I could just search those tags, for instance, on C++. And you could see, well, here happens to be something interesting that I found here. There is a report here. I captured this picture here from a seminar that I attended. And I just thought this was a nice thing that maybe I'll use for a figure and site later sometime. So that's as simple as it has to be here. Again, you can copy and paste things in easily. You can search for the tags. I've captured the date here. Maybe there's other interesting papers or talks, or if you attend a conference, you can take some notes here and it's all just in one document so you don't have to worry about it. I can access this easily from my phone and I can even do this in offline mode with Google Drive. So if I'm in the train, airplane, wherever I have a thought, I can go ahead and just log these notes down. So again, I like this as a relatively frictionless system here. Now, some other systems that you can use and that I commented that might be useful are just to, well, create a GitHub page in a repository. So I just created one with my own name. You can make it public or private as you choose here. And again, just give yourself topics. Now, what I like to do here is just sort of keep checklists or lists of things that were interesting, for instance, at various points in time. One, because this helps declutter my desktop so that I can think. If you're like me, even with this system, you still probably have 100 tabs or windows open anyways, but this is a place that I can put them later and sort of prioritize what was important. What was I thinking about? What was that C++ thing that might've been interesting at the time, but I really don't need to know about it right now when it comes to actually prioritizing tasks that I need to get done, but I do wanna save the thought for later. So maybe you do find a really good tutorial that explains some data structure, log it in here, give yourself a few notes and you have it forever, you don't have to worry. Now, if you're a student, maybe this doesn't quite fit the bill here. So of course you can go ahead and build yourself little cheat sheets. So that's something that I do. This is something that I give to my students, my little GDB cheat sheet, for instance, beyond the videos that I have on courses.mshot.io. But this idea is that, again, you just have a little place where you can check or accumulate over time some of your knowledge. And I think that's really important when it comes to building your own little note-taking system here that it is for you and others might benefit. But again, these are little cheat sheets so that they're short. They're not a humongous task, but again, to make sure that you take some notes. And sometimes those notes could be as simple as look at page 23 to learn about quicksort or whatever it might happen to be for the topic. So the other thing that I can recommend here, if I go back to my little uh, cheat sheet <laughs> here, slide here, is to actually write tutorials. Maybe they're Medium articles and that's a way to sort of document things. But sometimes if you're taking notes and you have something that you really don't understand, beyond just finding resources or asking questions, it is useful to take that idea, break it down and see what you can explain. Because that's honestly one of the best ways to learn something by being able to teach it. And you, when you teach something, you really can't hide what you don't know in the sense that you have to understand sort of step by step what's going on in a particular algorithm, data structure, piece of software, or whatever. Of course, you don't know 100% of things all the time, but again, it's just a helpful system to write stuff down, especially if you're trying to work on something that's a little bit more complicated. Again, if you're a student, maybe that's understanding an algorithm, but breaking it down, drawing a picture, and trying to teach it. Uh, how would you explain it to a friend? That's a way to put the mindset. And that really helps you evaluate where you are in your understanding. So for example, let's say again, you're trying to understand an algorithm, quick sort, and fundamentally, maybe you're just confused by it. Well, maybe you can start with the idea that, okay, this is an algorithm for sorting something. And you can at least start with that. You know, that's the purpose. Maybe there's a little bit of history that you want to do just to get your engine going and starting on the task. And then maybe you could start talking about, well, what's interesting about quicksort. 
it's faster than some other sort. Okay, so that's another note that you're teaching. And then you can talk about maybe some of the mechanisms for doing it. Okay, so there's this idea of partitioning. Maybe you don't quite understand it, but you know it's something important. So again, that's the idea with taking notes and sort of teaching things as you go along. This idea, again, of teaching as you're sort of taking your notes, whether they're publicly available on something like Medium or for yourself, is just another little secret that I think is very useful. And of course, like myself, I encourage you to make YouTube videos. They don't have to be perfect. There's plenty of room for all of us to make great content. And again, I think it's useful in the learning process. All right, my final piece of advice here as far as taking notes as a programmer is to also try to give yourself some constraints, just in the sense that it makes things more achievable. So for instance, I showed you that little cheat sheet with GTB, but you could go ahead and do the same thing for yourself and say, okay, I'm gonna take this algorithm or this course and try to put as much information as I can on just one page of paper. So in that way, it gives you a little bit of a constraint, it's achievable, and you can highlight what's actually important. You don't need to rewrite the whole book when you're studying, for instance, just like, you, again, don't need hundreds of tabs open on your desktop at any time. You really don't. It's a bad habit of my own that I'm trying to work on. But, you know, just get the bullet points, what's important, and know where to look for various information. So in those ways, I found giving yourself some constraints for building cheat sheets and these types of things are very useful. Now, of course, being a programmer, you're probably also going to be thinking of code, what certain things do, and want to see some of those examples laid out. Again, I think that's probably a good example where you could put snippets of code into GitHub uh, that help you understand something, capture videos, and of course, try to write some code. Again, once you've got a concrete idea about the thing that you're trying to understand or take notes on. So I hope that was useful to see a few different systems that I use for taking notes. Again, could be as simple as just a Google Doc, a GitHub repository, nothing fancy. Some folks like more uh, sophisticated software such as EndNote or other offline or online solutions. It doesn't really matter as long as you're just coming up with a system overall and getting your notes in one place so you can ask questions, practice, and continue to develop as a programmer. So with that said, folks, I hope this was useful. Hope you learned something. And I'd be really curious if you shared below in your comments what sort of systems that you use for note taking. Some folks actually learn various skills uh, in university or maybe your uh, primary school or secondary schools, um, depending on what country you're in. And there is a famous one known as a Cornell note taking system that I think some folks also might have learned or heard of. And there's various bullet journaling techniques that I've also seen. But again, for me, what's worked is the most simple, frictionless idea possible, which is just to toss things into a Google Doc or GitHub page. So anyways, folks, with that said, thanks for your time and attention as always, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one.